Mesdames et messieurs, bonsoir. Donc aujourd'hui, je suis chargée de présenter un peu la perspective de la santé et plus spécialement l'agenda de l'Organisation mondiale de la santé. Et, mais avant, avant cela, j'aurais voulu remercier euh, mes collègues de l'UNESCO pour, euh, encore une fois, organiser cet, cet, cet heureux événement. Et je voudrais féliciter nos collègues de UNESCO Chair qui ont vraiment euh, énormément travaillé pour mettre en place cette, euh, cette unique plateforme en fait, de collaboration entre le secteur de l'éducation et le, le secteur de, de la santé. Donc, encore une fois, mes félicitations aux collègues de l'UNESCO Chair, plus particulièrement à, au docteur Didier Jourdain, à, à M. Rouf aussi, qui est derrière dans le background, mais qui a aussi beaucoup contribué. Et je voudrais aussi euh, saluer l'effort de mon collègue euh, Martin Weber, qui a aussi énormément travaillé pour mettre en place cette collaboration, qui, euh, qui travaille à l'OMS euh, au bureau régional de Copenhague. Ceci dit, euh, je, vais présenter, euh, je vais faire ma présentation en anglais, donc euh, j'espère que de toute façon vous avez une interprétation simultanée. Alors je vais, uh, I'm going now to shift into English language, if you don't mind, and uh, I'd like to present to you uh, somehow the agenda of WHO uh, with regards to health, adolescent health, child health, and uh, health promoting schools, and also highlight what are the expectations with regards to the work and collaboration with WHO, with UNESCO Chair and WHOCC for education and health. First, I'd like to set the scene. We have mentioned several times today about the Sustainable Development Goals Agenda 2030. We mentioned about the two key targets in this discussion, which are about goal three on, on health and goal four about education. But what is unique somehow about the Sustainable Development Goals Agenda is that it provides a unique opportunity not only to work across sectors, but to understand also the impact of the work that we do in the, in the health sector or education sector vis-a-vis -vis the other development goals. What we do in education affects health, but also affects housing, affects employment, affects working conditions, it has multiple effects. What we do in, 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 uh, uh, in health has also similar effects. So what we need to keep in mind when we speak about health and education, first that we don't speak about health only, we speak about health and well-being. The second aspect is that everything that we do in our own sector affects the other goals. In WHO, our work for the next five years is going to be directed and guided by the 13th General Program of Work. Under this General Program of Work, we have three key targets, what we call the three billions. The first billion is about universal health coverage. How do we ensure that more people have access to healthcare services? And schools are actually in, uh, critical and strategic platforms to deliver some of the healthcare services. The second billion is about making one billion people that lead a healthier life. And this is where our project fits perfectly as well when we speak about promoting health and well-being as well as education, is how do we make the lives of those people much better? A third billion is about more people that are uh, protected from health emergencies. We spoke very little, or we touched upon the subject of health and education in conflict situations. When we speak about also displaced populations, when we speak about conditions where there is chronic crisis, so it's important that when we think about the agenda of UNESCO chair, to keep in mind those that are not necessarily in cities, those that are not necessarily in villages, but that those who are living in conflict situations. Speaking about facts about health and mortality among youth, you have seen in the video of the Doc Director General for WHO that every day, uh, over around 4,600 children aged between 5 and 19 die of preventable death. 
these are some of the statistics that have been published in the global uh, health report. But what I would like to call your attention to is that there is a growing threat that is somehow a bit more vicious than the other ones because it is, it, um, its consequences is more in the long term. And we spoke about chronic diseases or non-communicable diseases, but these problems start from early childhood. So there is now a, um, a real threat to child health and child education is actually childhood obesity. When we speak about preventing childhood obesity, we speak about, again, promoting healthy lifestyle. But healthy lifestyle is a very broad concept. You cannot talk about only developing messages or developing uh, uh, or disseminating knowledge to address the issue of childhood obesity. You need to take a more holistic approach to the child health to, and look at the conditions in which the children are, are living, working, studying, interacting. And you need to act on all these different systems. So again, I would not go through the statistics why schools are strategic platforms uh, for promoting, again, the health of youth uh, children and adolescents, it's because, according to the statistics, more than 90% of children are enrolled in schools. So it's a platform that will enable somehow um, a high reach of inter health interventions or health promotion interventions. But what I would like to highlight here is that as we are very happy about the multisectoral collaboration and the interactions between the different sectors, what I was reminded of every time when I was consulting with colleagues on the education sector and health sector is that this fetan can be meaningful to you but doesn't speak to the education sector. It seems that every time when we were speaking about program, while we were having the same objectives, while we were having the same intentions, it seemed that we needed an interpreter between us. And what it told me is that we want the same things, but we need to reconcile, we need to connect, but also reconcile the agenda so that we adjust somehow, not only the understanding, not only in, the, in terms of implementation of our interventions, but again, the messages, the interventions, our partners, and that we, somehow, as I mentioned, have a joint agenda. And what we see with the UNESCO chair, it's a really critical platform that will bring the different agendas. It seems to me that the, 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 the function of the chair is also, in addition to what was presented earlier, it's bridging, it's connecting, it's about sharing. So we have high expectations about the work of the UNESCO chair, WHO CC. Some of them are highlighted here. But again, we see the UNESCO chair as a great resource for translating into actions some of the global commitment and agenda because of the expanded network, because of the wealth of knowledge. We know that somehow we will be able to work together to make sure that there is what we call this globalization so bringing down to earth those global agenda. Inequity in health, inequity in education outcome is at the heart of the WHO agenda. And we know that through the work of WHO, CC and UNESCO chair, we will be able to reduce this inequity. So I'll stop here and um, invite you to uh, ask questions. I, I have other slides, but I understand it's 8.30 and you're all tired, so <laughs> thank you.